and the President and CEO at Emerge. Um, uh, thanks for having me here this morning. Welcome to North Minneapolis, everyone, and uh, those of you who have joined us on the phone. Um, I, I want to tell you a little bit about Emerge and our work and um, how I think you may connect with what the, the task force is up to, and uh, specifically tell you about the project that we've been, we've been hauling along here for the past uh, four years that we're very excited to announce a groundbreaking Technology Center to be built here in North Minneapolis. Um, and um, so a little background first on, on who we are. Uh, Emerge is, is a group of uh, programs that grew out of the Pillsbury United Communities in Minneapolis about six years ago. And um, it, uh, we have a collection of, of efforts in workforce development, community development, social enterprise strategies includes uh, career skill training, financial ed, and asset building, and um, some unique work with families and young people in North Minneapolis. Uh, annually, we serve several thousand people, mainly here and in uh, a couple of other places, uh, South Minneapolis and St. Paul. And we help over, we help over approximately 800 people annually get jobs um, through about nine different programs, and um, it's about a 50 based at 1101 West Broadway, just about a mile from here. Um, and uh, in 2007, we co-developed and moved into a commercial building there. And um, because we have a pension for um, things, uh, developing buildings, and, and um, uh, wanting to, to really uh, build a place-based strategy around economic opportunities, we, we took on the, the redevelopment of North, North Branch Library building, which is adjacent to our building across the street on Emerson. And um, I have some boards here that um, I don't have, but uh, yeah. I don't know what that says, is that I don't have anything, uh, any kind of electronic presentation, but um, a little bit about the project. Um, for the past four years, and I think they can just be passed around, or, or uh, if you can see them, um, little, you get a sense of what we're doing. It's a wonderful building, in fact, the state's oldest library building that uh, ended as a, uh, closed as a library in 1979. It's had um, underutilization a little bit and, and uh, aging over the time. It's uh, a $6.5 million renovation and we've, we've secured all the funds to do so. Uh, and we'll start that process in the beginning of June this year. Um, wow. So uh, our plan I had the pleasure of being in this building and wow. seeing it in its current condition, which is uh, quite a task that they are taking on, but one worth doing, being that it was the state's first public library. It's, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it's the oldest standing library. It was the first branch library right. in our system. And just three years after, you were the first central library in Minneapolis. So um, uh, it's an important, physical asset for our, our community, but um, we're very excited about this idea of coming full circle in history and a, a way to renew the, this um, important building for, for the community, renew it uh, to create a career and technology center. And what we plan to do there is, is um, technology-based training, career education for youth and adults, and much needed community space um, in that part of this, this neighborhood. Um, we, um, it's going to take us 10 months to uh, develop the building. We just made an opening in April, in April 2014. And our concept for the center is um, to create a community learning center that's, that'll be a clearinghouse, um, merge job training programs, as well as partner-led programs that we, we, um, we want to convene uh, at the place. Um, First, uh, we intend to create a digital access hub that um, is, has open community access with a lot of, um, of openness and ability for people to, to reach it. And I think really um, strategies similar to what we just saw in the video, which is very exciting, and we're, we're a project that came on a little bit after the broadband access project, um, but we, we have um, some similar concepts. Uh, plus, I would say. So 
Um, uh, we, we intend to provide uh, ongoing uh, uh, computer literacy from basic to more advanced uh, programming uh, adaptive to the needs of, of uh, participants. And um, we want to continue to, to create a, a, a kind of access center that, that, that is adaptable to kind of where we're going with technology devices and um, not necessarily fixed computer labs, though we will, we will, we have, we will have some. Um, the, uh, you know, really what we're trying to do is create a, a, the most practical uses of te technology to help people gain skills and, and build job readiness. And we will have on-site job seeking help um, constantly that relates to our programs that emerge. We're, we also have um, uh, either in operation or in the making career training in uh, building systems and maintenance, uh, uh, entry level medical careers, advanced manufacturing, and office and customer service uh, career training. Uh, we also have on site entrepreneurship training through a community partner called Neon here in North Minneapolis that, that uh, trains entrepreneurs to start and develop. Also going to have ongoing career readiness certification, which is really job job readiness uh, preparation, um, as well as financial literacy training on site. And we're very much hoping to um, uh, connect with a partner who might bring uh, STEM learning opportunities for young people. Uh, in, in the we think it's a, a section of the neighborhood where there is there are uh, not as many opportunities there or facilities. To so um, that's kind of generally the concept, and I, I, I intended to keep it brief um, uh, to have a discussion, but we're very interested in the work of the uh, task force here and um, how, it, how it might relate to it. In an effort, really, I mean, we, we've developed data about um, participation and uh, of broadband access in this community. That would be great if you could um, share that with us. And, and I, I think it's mainly extracted from from some of the public uh, digital access study that was done in Minneapolis. That Otto Dahl did, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. But your extraction of that would be interesting, I think, to the, mm -hmm. to the group and to, you know, what we do, partly what we do is uh, we do produce a report or uh, we will do another one this year for the governor and for the legislators who uh, then are able to, you know, they have found this stuff quite interesting. We've been able to tell quite a story in terms of where there are gaps in access and then what is working. So I think that is helpful going forward. How many people are you serving through your current uh, technology work? Yeah. Um, uh, to, I would, so we serve about three to 4,000 participants annually in all of our programs. And in, in terms of our, our um, Computer um, training classes that we have on site are our entrepreneurship training and our career trainings. Um, it's about s several hundred people yeah. um, on an ongoing basis, and um, so uh, and it ranges. And we're, we're very we're excited about the potential of expanding those opportunities or the, 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 the notion of building them uh, be there, and, and they are. What 
band-aid services. Mm -hmm. um, the, the two examples of, of band-aided uh, services would be uh, uh, some work that we do with ex-offenders and um, uh, working with a couple of pilot efforts and where we get referrals from the criminal justice system from, from um, probation officers and parole officers and, um, and so we have some mandated participants in our job program including a re-entry hub strategy that we have with the Department of Corrections. Um, and then and then MFIP, the Minnesota Family Investment Program uh, work requirements. Uh, Mike, can you tell me a little bit more about the entry-level medical careers yeah. training that yeah. you're doing? This is something that we, we, have, we have not um, established uh, to date, so we're, we're in the process of really building our, our, our programming in a couple of key areas in our medical careers uh, strategy is, is one of them. We have many um, relationships with, with post-secondary institutions who are providing such programming. We're, we're either we're open to the notion of facilitating uh, some training and bringing it on site or um, creating something that's customized with, with uh, employer partners, which is a, a lot of how we like to look at things. We like to work with employers who, who um, are able to uh, um, provide and identify um, access to, to employment opportunities should a certain set of, of, of skill criteria be met. Okay. I hope you'll stick around with us through lunch. I think that I think we're going to have more lunches available probably than there are people here. So if you would stick around while Bruce does his presentation.